Well, here's a question we don't ask ourselves every day, but perhaps we should. Why does the Australian Capital Territory even exist? The obvious answer is so that we can have a national capital designed around our national parliament. And we all know how that turned out. The national parliament is not a bubble, as they call it, it's its own ecosystem. The issues that people obsess over inside that heavily fortified and guarded building bear little relevance to the lives of the people on the other side of the state circle road that encircles it. Our nation would be a very different place if our politicians weren't cloistered away from those they purport to serve and instead went about their business in the middle of downtown Sydney, Melbourne or any other capital city. Their sense of superiority would disappear quickly for a start and the issues they discuss might be more relevant to everyday life than climate change and Indigenous voices. But it's a bit late now to shift it. We're stuck with the National Parliament being where it is. But the ACT? What purpose does that serve? It was originally created so that New South Wales, which surrounds it, could have no influence over the federal government. Fair enough. But the Founding Fathers, who said the territory should occupy no less than 100 square miles, didn't realise what monster they were creating. Initially, the place was run by a federal minister. A plebiscite of ACT residents in 1978 voted overwhelmingly for that situation to continue. But the federal government, which understandably has better things to do, ceded power to a legislative assembly um, elected, elected democratically anyway in 1988. And for most of the time since then, the electorate with the highest proportion of bureaucrats in the nation has voted in leftist legislators who couldn't run a chook raffle. One of the ACT government's greatest achievements is to install a forest of windmills in the surrounding bushland and boast that it only produces renewable energy. This is true, but the territory relies on New South Wales to provide it with reliable and cheap coal and gas-fired energy to keep the lights on and heaters working during those freezing Canberra nights. So while there could be an argument for dispensing with the ACT government altogether, this week, it took one step closer to actually getting bigger. Let's get the host of the local breakfast talkback show on 2CC, Stephen Senatiempo, to talk about it. Stephen, welcome. Good morning, Fred. Good Afternoon, evening. Good evening. Yes. So the <laughs> ACT is growing. What's the story? How did this happen? Yeah, there's a, a shared development uh, called Gin and Dairy. It's a new suburb that's been created that straddles the ACT New South Wales border. Well, it's been announced this week that the ACT government is uh, going to take over the whole lot. They've done a deal with Dominic Perrottet that uh, they, the ACT will expand to, uh, to include the entire suburb of Gin and Dairy, which um, look, i got to say the ACT is well and truly big enough and we've got a government that can't manage what it's got already. So uh, I don't know that it necessarily needs another suburb added to the ACT. 